Right, so now let's look at the gaming performance and I'll just put these up first. Yeah, it is what it is. I will say the MacBook Pro has not had the drivers updated for like six months. They're the same drivers that it come out with when it was released last year, like November. So that is what it is. You'll get thermal throttling with the Mac, especially with the 5500 to 5300, it was less. you also get battery drain with the Mac as well. So if you want to really game, XPS 15 and the Surface are probably your best bet there. And it's just going to depend on what game, right? Some games, the four cores will be a bottleneck, but some games, having a more powerful graphics card on a Surface will be better. And then, you know, same sort of thing with the XPS 15. Having a beefier CPU will help that out and be better in some situations. So anyway, that's gaming out of the way. Let's get into content creation. All right, so I have my audio interface here, the Autorio Audio Fuse, and we're speaking into the mic. 32 size buffer if we have a look here 32 32 i'm away from the mic now but that is 32 let's go into the recording there we go we're right back we're back here now let's bring up that latency monitor 32 buffer size this has been going for a while now so if it was going to choke and start playing up um it would have done so by now and this is actually a good test for the display as well because bright light coming into the room you know natural sunlight onto a dark background, what's the reflections look like? That's worst case scenario. But for audio production, it is fine. Look at that, all yellows, 32 size buffer. And you music guys will know how low that is. So anyway, DPC latency, no problem. It's actually no problem with the Surface or the MacBook Pro either, for what it's worth. And music producers be happy because you can get an XPS 15 now. That is better than the Aero, that is better than the Surface Book. And we know the Surface Book, yeah, it's okay. It's definitely serviceable when it comes to this. So is the Aero and so is the Aorus and all these other Windows laptops that are more powerful than this, if you look at, say, specs. But I don't know what it is. But this is the best scrubbing on Windows. I don't know why. Why? Tell me why. I don't know what Dell are doing if they're... And this is since the update too. And I have tested the other laptops with the new update and they still don't have this scrubbing. The scrubbing is not as good as this. And this is nearly as good as the Mac. And the Mac is the scrubbing king. Let's have a look at these three beasts, the content creation beast, the sexy beast, the three best looking laptops in my opinion, the ones I would look at anyway. And either you get that or you don't. Some people have taste, some people don't. Now these are definitely the three laptops I'm considering as a daily driver and the XPS 17 as well. So on the left, Surface Book 3, quad core, Intel 10th generation, i7 CPU, weakest CPU out of the lot, but it has the most powerful graphics card. This one in the middle, and look how small and sexy it looks. I mean, it's 15.6 inches versus 16 inch on the MacBook Pro, and look how small and compact that is. You can really see the footprint, how compact it is. I think this really shows it and yeah it just looks really modern quad infinity display it just yeah it's next level in terms of that but this one's sort of like a goldilocks model because it's not an eight core model it's a six core i7 10 750h 16 gigs ram and a gtx 1650 now of course you can get an eight core version and i will have that in when i get one i'm waiting for the i9 and on the right, we have the MacBook Pro 16 with the ninth generation 8-core i9. So that's the 9980HK. That one has 32 gigs RAM and an 8 gigabyte Radeon Pro 5500. Of course, in the benchmarks I'll show you, they're carefully selected where it's hardware encoded. And I will tell you when there's a difference between 6 and 8 cores. If I was going to say for GPU-wise, I reckon the 1650Ti and the 5500M, the Radeon Pro, very similar, very similar. But you do have 8GB of RAM on the MacBook Pro. You're looking at the displays, I tried to match the brightness as much as I can, even though the surface on the left cannot get that sort of brightness that the two on the right can in the MacBook Pro and XPS 15. Surface Book 3, 100% sRGB, doesn't have a very wide color gamut. It's only 370 nits of brightness. The XPS 15, very interesting, 470 nits. I'm just rounding off. But it only measured around 78 Adobe RGB, 
when it's supposed to be 100%. I think it has to do with the hardware built in low blue light emission that this display has. That's a technology built in. It may be tricking the colorimeter into thinking it's missing sort of blue spectrums or something. I don't know. But if you just look at it on the surface, I mean, it looks OLED like, looks brighter than all of them, even though I matched them as best I could. Definitely looks like more color, more saturation and stuff, but that is in that mode. It doesn't have to be like that. I can go in here and change it. If I want it to look like P3, I can do that. If I want it like sRGB, looks like that. It's less saturated now, looks more like the Mac one now, I guess. I've got to go through all these color settings in this Premier Color and I'm gonna work out what's going on with that color gamut there because it should be 100% Adobe RGB, but I'll just leave it in the full spectrum there, full vibrant, see how we go there. So anyway, I've got to look into that with that blue light emission. Is it tricking the colorimeter or do I have a dud that only has 78% Adobe RGB? Okay, here I found a little bit of an issue sort of thing, right? Lowest brightness setting. Okay, it's zero, all right? So absolute lowest brightness setting. That's way too bright for the lowest setting. That's like if you're in a dark room and this room's lit up, that's just nuts. And of course the Mac over here was actually over 500 nits, it's like 530 nits. Very color accurate in the Mac and that is near enough 100% P3 and, and it's low 90s of Adobe RGB. But I will say the MacBook Pro and the XPS 15 have the better display for me. That's a 3x2 display on the surface on the left. It's not that bright. It is a beautiful display, I've got to say. It looks really nice but it's just not in the class of the other two displays. It's not as bright. And the color gamut is only 100% sRGB. Now, will there be an OLED model in the XPS? No, no one makes a 16 by 10 OLED display, which both these MacBook Pro and XPS 15 have, 16 by 10. So until someone makes one, well, they're not gonna have one. Which one would I choose out of the Mac and the XPS? Oh, I've got to actually find out. I've got to go through those color profiles and see what the real color gamut is of that XPS 15. But I do like how gorgeous it is that, you know, look at it. Man, so compact, bezel-less, it's just the future, right? And that's how it was with the XPS 15 in 2015 when they brought out the first Infinity Edge display. It took everyone ages to catch up. I would say it's gonna take a while for other people to catch up to that sort of bezel-less design there. Anyway, let's get into some performance benchmarks. All three of those laptops are beautiful things, but let's get into it. And I can't run the actual Puget System Lightroom benchmark on the Mac, but we'll talk about the export score, exporting 75 raw NEFs from Lightroom to JPEGs. And as you can see here, wow, the XPS 15 is pretty good considering it has six cores. I'd expect obviously it to be pretty much the same as the MacBook Pro 16 if it did have eight cores. And then we can see the Surface Book, which is actually really good considering it has four cores. You would think that having, you know, four cores less than the MacBook Pro would be like half the speed or take, you know, twice as long. But you can see in this graph, no. It's not like that. I think it's using AVX 512 because it actually beats out the Ryzen system. So eight core Ryzen system in the G14, yes, the Surface Book 3 will, you know, output these 74 raw NFs to JPEG faster. So interesting there. Now let's get into the Puget System Lightroom Classic benchmark. And yes, as I said before, you can't do it on the Mac. I hope they do make it for the Mac soon. But anyway, the Surface Book 3 on the left and the XPS 15 on the right. And as you can see there, well, the XPS is faster. You'd expect it to be faster because it has more cores, you know, six cores versus four cores on the Surface Book 3. But the Surface Book 3 does have a faster GPU. So the active score seems very similar. Maybe it's using some GPU there to do the previews or something. But the passive score there, you can see those extra cores on the XPS 15 really make a difference there. So, and they both have 16 gigs RAM. But look at the RAM speed on that Surface. Wow, 4,000. Wow, 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 4,200. That's like crazy. So let's have a look at an export score from Premiere Pro and this is 6K HEVC to 4K HEVC and as you can see here, wow, 
the MacBook Pro wins. This is hardware encoding, okay? So having extra CPU cores doesn't really make that much difference, if at all. So it's basically using the hardware, the GPU and the Intel HD. So whether you have the eight core XPS 15, the score really won't be that much faster. Although, of course, once I get the on on in, I will test it again, but it's hardware encoding, right? And the Mac, loves HEVC, H.265, it is a beast for that. I don't know if it uses the T2 chip or whatever in conjunction with the GPU as well. Who knows what's happening with the Mac? Metal is just some sort of magic. And the XPS, a good export score, certainly faster than the Surface Book 3. And this is hardware encoding, and you would expect with a beefier GPU on a Surface Book 3 that the score would be faster. So that's interesting. Not sure why that's happening. I guess that's just HEVC. Now, if you have a look at my famous project that I test every single laptop on, and what we got here is exporting from 4K H.264 to 4K H.264, a YouTube preset basically, and woof, look at that. The Surface Book 3, right? It's the fastest. I have a theory on this. I reckon the XPS 15, the 1650, I think that uses the old NVENC encoder. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Some of you guys would know that. But I can remember from the last generation, the 1650 did not have the new NVENC encoder. So that's basically what's been used with H.264 using the NVENC encoder because this is the latest update from Premiere. And the Mac, yeah, it's not that great on H.264, even in Final Cut. I think that what's happened with H.264, I think Apple have just left it as like legacy now and everything's going to HEVC H.265. So this is very interesting. Do reckon the Surface Book has that new NVENC encoder and, and that's why I did want a 1660 Ti with the XPS 15, getting the extra, you know, two gigabytes of video memory and the new NVENC encoder as well. So hardware encoding, that's what happens. Now let's export that same project to HEVC. And again, this is hardware encoding. Coding. CPUs really don't make a difference in this. And woof, the Mac, yeah, just what I said before, it's probably using T2, all everything put together, it's just metal, it's just, yeah, that's what happens. And by the way, you hook up an eGPU to the Mac, it'll use both the internal GPU and the eGPU both at once. I'm going to do a really big comparison between the MacBook Pro 16 and the XPS 15 and I will include a GPU figures in that. So stay tuned for that one. But here we can see it's not using the NVENC encoder anymore and that the surface on the top is slower here. Even though it's hardware encoding, it is slower than the XPS 15. As I said before, cores won't matter. So having the i9 and the XPS 15 will, will not make a difference at all. Now let's have a look at Photoshop. And as you can see here, the Surface Book 3 on the left has the lowest score. The XPS 15 in the middle yes, has the medium score and the MacBook Pro on the right has the highest score. Now that should be no surprise because the MacBook Pro does have eight cores. It has an i9, as you can see over here, the i9. And this one has 16 gigs of RAM. So this isn't my score, actually. It's someone else's score because my score is actually higher than this, but I do have 32 gigs of RAM in the MacBook Pro. So what you can see here is I expect the XPS 15 in the middle to be pretty much the same as the Mac if it had the i9, like the eight cores. The GPU score is higher than the MacBook Pro on the right. The filter score is where the Mac is gaining its advantages there. But again, two extra cores. And the Surface Book 3 is what you'd expect. It has four cores, but it has the beefier GPU. But interestingly, look at the GPU score compared to the XPS 15. You know, why is that GPU score lower than the XPS 15 when the XPS 15 has a 1650 and the Surface Book 3 has a 1660 Ti. So that's interesting. They both had studio drivers, so mm, I don't know what's going on there, but they're all going to be good for Photoshop. And remember, the advantage of the Surface Book 3 is, yeah, you can write on it. You can draw on it like an artist. So you can do stuff on that with Photoshop that you can't do with the other two laptops. So just bear that in mind. Now let's get into the real deal. Let's get into Premiere Pro. And as you can see here, shock horror, it scales with cores. Four cores on the Surface Book 3 on the left. Six cores with the XPS 15 in the middle and eight cores with the MacBook Pro on the right. 
Have a look at the GPU scores though. <laughs> wow, they're all virtually the same. Now, that MacBook Pro does have 32 gigs as well. That does make a little bit of difference, not too much in this test. But we've already seen how the XPS 15 scrubs in the timeline. So it's gonna be a content creation beast. It has good render scores as well. And I reckon you add another two cores to that XPS 15, which of course I will get the i9 in at some point with the eight cores and I'll put 32 gigs in it as well. That's going to be a very close run thing with the MacBook Pro there. What the MacBook Pro is great at is live playback score. And it actually was the same as like a Gigabyte Aorus that had an RTX 2070 Super in it. And that thing was a 90 watt as well. So the Mac is just, yeah, it's just a beast for playback. The export scores, even the 6 core XPS 15 beats it in that regard. And the Surface Book 3... Interesting that the GPU score is actually lower than the XPS 15, even though the GPU is more powerful and it has six gigabytes of memory. But for playback, that's where it's going to suffer. You know, having four cores versus, you know, six or eight. It depends what footage you're using, but yeah, it's always going to be like that. So I've got to say, I'm actually really happy with the XPS performance here and the Mac is always a beast for content creation. So there you have it. That's very promising to me. It plays back like a beast. My, you know, sample project, the scrubbing is probably the best on Windows with the XPS 15. The MacBook Pro and XPS 15, they trade blows for blows. And I reckon I'll put 32 gigs in the XPS 15 and an i9. And it's really going to be hard to choose between the two unless you're doing HEVC, where I think the Mac will always be faster just because of metal using all those things I said before. And it's going to be interesting when I whack an EGP on both of them, what happens there. The Surface Book 3, you can't make up for cores. Hardware encoding helps out a lot for the renders and stuff like that. But for playback and stuff like that, four cores, they should have went in the Comet Lake, I reckon. So if you don't know, there is a 15 watt Comet Lake CPU that has six cores. If it had those six cores... It'll probably be the same as the XPS 15. It wouldn't be that far behind, would it? So they're all great for content creation. I think the Surface Book 3 is going to excel for Photoshop, you know, being able to draw on it and stuff like that. But um, yeah, they're all great content creation machines. You just got to work out which one's best for you for what situation. And that's what these sort of videos are here to help. And I hope you enjoyed it. But there will be a bigger shootout between the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro with more stuff. So make sure you subscribe. I thank you guys for watching. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.